Welcome back Spartans, this is JAG coming back with another video. I'll be your host today, your host with all the latest posts coming at you live from 300. On this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build an anti 3 star war base for Town Hall 7. Now, just before we get into this, I'm just going to check up on war. I just want to see how we're doing. And then uh, we'll jump right into how to build it. And I'll give you a little bit of a run through. Okay, everything's going well. So let's start this up and go to the war section. Let's click, let's start a new base, and then I'll show you my current base, uh, especially considering I'm going on to Town Hall 8. Uh, so before we begin, the first thing you want to do with war base is to make it anti three star, which is the main goal uh, for a lot of the town halls because most of the bases will be three star guaranteed. And even at town hall seven, I really got to stipulate that there is no anti three star base. All bases can be three star at town hall seven, as long as the person who's attacking knows what they're doing. So it's really just building that base that can stop the majority of the attackers, so maybe like 90%, 95%, and make it as hard as possible. And the way you do that is you figure out what three-star attacks are being used at that Town Hall. So for example, at Town Hall 7, it's all dragons, basically. You can get, I have seen some where mass hogs can work, but they're more unreliable, so it really is all dragon air attacks, which means we have to build our base to stop those aerial attacks. In order to do so, I'm going to show you how. So first things first, with especially from Town Hall 7 and going upwards, really where you see at Town Hall 8 and Town Hall 9, you want to make the clan castle hard to get. So you know what, I'm just going to place it in the middle here. And as you see the circle radius all around the edge there, we need to place defenses out around there so that they can't pull the clan castle easily. We want to make it as difficult as possible. And to do so, all it takes is dropping a cannon somewhere around there so now you see that the cannon is outside the radius so any uh, like giants or anything coming and attacking that it's gonna be much harder to pull the clan castle troops as a result so I'm just gonna drop maybe some uh, cannons around here and like I said this video is going to be more just an informative way how you know how to build your base I wouldn't say necessarily build the space but it at least gives you an idea of how to build it and go from there so kind of check that all right let's move this a little bit more makes it hard to get at and pull and then we're gonna do another cannon there nice and evenly distributed as well and you know what we're just gonna drop a cannon in nice and close in case they get in here and then the next thing we want to do is probably place our archer towers as well because again as you can see I've got all four quadrants, but now I want to make sure that there's no other way they can kind of get into there. So the other way we can do that is, you know what, mortars are probably, since we're trying to protect aerial, we're going to want to protect our air defenses and our archer towers in the middle more so. So we can place the other defenses more around the outside that we don't care so much at uh, letting them die. So this mortar, not really caring if it uh, gets taken out. Drop this mortar over here. Again, same thing, just a little bit on the outside, which means anything they drop hog-wise or giant-wise will be stopped by that, but not in this case. We're going to have to move that over there. And that really covers there. And then we're going to have to also cover this bottom spot at there, which means, you know what, we'll probably, for simplicity's sake, we'll just place the wizard tower there just as some extra added protection. All right, so this is, as you see, this is going to make the clan castle hard to pull. They're going to have to take out one defense minimum. And the thing is, all the next closest defenses are all along the outside. So there's a good chance that they still probably won't be able to pull it even after taking that one. And that's the goal so far. So our next thing is we want to place our air defenses and make those hard to take out as well. So, for example, we can put one here. We can put one, here, say, about here maybe put this one more you know what I'd like to have it so that when they're attacking the defenses you can damage them a bit and then we'll put the other one here and then you also the other thing you gotta think about besides the air defenses is well the next step really besides after protecting your clan castle is how you're going to position the air defenses and the air sweeper since those will be the things that will really stop the dragon attacks so 
when looking at that, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can stack all your air defenses, say, on one side, for example. So, like, we can stack them all here and here. So, what happens is someone who knows what they're doing is going to lightning one of these, and then they're going to try and attack, but they have to come at the way, uh, in this case, at the air defenses, since it's the closest to the air defenses as is. Uh, alternatively, if you put them more like this, then they'll be able to pick off one of them, and then they'll be able to come the other way. So they'd probably pick off this one and then come in from this direction over here. So you really got to kind of think how you're going to position them and how you're going to almost force them to tack against the air sweeper. And that is ideally what you want to do. Now, I don't like to put them all on the same side just because when you stack them, it's a little bit easy if they're clustered. That being said, though, getting something where you put the sweeper over in this direction and then we put the air defenses here and you want we'll put them here and we want, let's put it on either side of the clan castle making it pretty hard to get to and we'll put this one actually a little bit closer that should make it hard enough for them not to be able to get the air sweeper, air defense, maybe a little bit to the side there. Okay, and then we're going to throw the next thing after you really decide what air defense position you want with the sweeper, which in this case I put the sweeper here because it's going to blow against all these air defenses. No matter which air defense they take out, they're going to either have to most likely, since they'll have to take out one of these two because they're the easiest, they're going to have to come from this direction or this direction, and the air sweeper should be able to push them back pretty well. So the next thing what you want to do at that point is then protect at the Town Hall 7, protect your air defenses by placing high health uh, storages or Town Hall around them essentially. So for example, if you put something here, that's going to take quite a bit of time in order to get taken out, which then gives more attack time for then your air defenses to actually shoot at the dragons in that case. So, something like that. You know what, we'll put another one maybe over here and we'll put another one over here, for example. And you know what, we'll put it around there. So this way, as you can see, they are protecting this air defense here and they are then protecting this one and this one as well. And actually, technically, I should move it more like this because they're going to have to come at an angle if they want to get these two air defenses if they take, for some reason, this one out. And if they take this one out, the next two closest are over here and here. And actually, if you haven't already seen, uh, go watch my How to Drag Loon, the three-star attack for Town Hall 7 video. It'll probably give a better explanation and understanding as to why I'm setting up my bases here, uh, my storage is here on, say, these two air defenses or these two air defenses as well. So take a look at that if you haven't already. So I'm also actually going to drop the town hall here because that should then protect this one very much as well. And you know what? We're going to drop that storage just a little bit there, a little bit there. And like I said, this is going to be a quick video so much more so you know how to potentially build your own, not necessarily copy this, but this one actually might potentially end up being good. I'm not going to go through all the steps, but just the basic stuff. Next thing is going to be the archer towers as well. We're going to want to protect those. So let's drop one here. You know what? We're going to drop maybe one over here, one over here as well. And actually, you know what? I'm going to drop one over here and here. And oh, that was my phone, excuse me. <laughs> and then we're going to drop one over there. And you know what? I'm going to actually drop this right in here just to slot it up, give it a little bit of defense there. Like I said, we don't really care so much about the walls at this point, mainly because most people are going to attack uh, aerial, but we will make a little bit of a ground protection with the walls that we have. So now what you can see left is we really just have the Teslas, traps, and then just kind of more uh, the collectors and the barracks and camps as well. So let's just set up the Teslas, see if we can get that actually. Let's see, I need something to block up that spot. And you know what? We're going to remove that. A barracks generally has some decent health that we can use that to protect. And for the Tesla, let's put it in the back end in case you try to get someone that tries to take out that balloon. 
and we'll drop one over here and we'll drop one over here as well uh, let's make that symmetrical and, uh, and a little bit more symmetrical it's not really symmetrical it doesn't matter <laughs> and then for the king the king can actually be used is another good step to be used as protection for your air defenses because the dragons will get caught up on trying to kill the king versus the things around them which then again keeps the air defenses alive more quickly which means that we're gonna want probably to put him actually right there that'll probably be a more appropriate uh, spot and then we're gonna put this over here that works we'll put them probably more like that and then now let's start building up our walls now and like I said right now this is more for anti-air I'm trying to see hmm let's go the whole goal is essentially since it's anti-air we want to then push it back so it's harder for them to attack which means we want to kind of see this white area here that's where they can't deploy troops which means let's try and make it very difficult for them to actually drop anything by dropping maybe some camps so let's drop since they're gonna have to attack if you watched my prior Dragon Loon video you'll know that they have to attack probably from this side or this side because coming from this back end is going to be pretty difficult to get to those air defenses so let's drop something like this to force them really far back at attacking. And let's do the same thing on this side as well. Just like that. And let's drop the last camp over here somewhere. Really force them to attack far. Let's drop some walls just as protection here in case they do try and do some ground attack. And... We're going to go maybe something like this as well. And again, something like that. And let's go there. Let's go like this. You know what? I actually want to go one more. Because I think that's going to be enough to go towards this cannon over here. There we go. And let's bring that up as well. It's not super symmetrical, but that doesn't really matter. Because the whole point is just enough to stop them from really doing anything major. And you know what? we're going to drop it right around here. Go one more, go down to here. And, again, like I said, very quick base design, but it's more just to show what we're trying to do. Okay, so now that we kind of have our overall base where our air defenses are protected in the middle to really stop the dragons, we have an air sweeper over here forcing them to go against the air sweeper, ideally. We have... Our clan castle protected by the defenses, so it's not easy to pull the troops. They're going to have to break a wall in order to do it. We're going to want to drop corner huts just to kill some time, ideally. That's another thing that you want to do, and if you've watched most of my videos, you know that I'm a stickler for corner huts because you really do get a lot of wasted attacks, and I've seen it even in our own clan wars where I tell my guys, watch the corner huts, take them out early. And we're going to drop those over there. All right. So now it's just kind of filling in the gaps in the middle, which we're going to drop in larger pieces, if anything. Let's drop something. We'll fill up this spot here. Drop a collector over here to... And let's drop the spell factory. That should take up most of the space. That's good. Let's really overload the protection over here. Drop some collectors over here. And hmm. Drop another one right there. And we should be able to take up Ah, almost all the space. Have to drop something there. 
Alrighty, so let's try and fill the space as quick as possible for you guys. Keep this nice and short. Also, I'm actually about to upgrade to Town Hall 8 pretty soon, so I gotta beat it before it kicks in. Alright, almost done. Uh, I'm running out of space. Or things to fill up. Yeah, let's drop it there. Let's see how we can reposition some of these things. It's pretty clustered over here. I can probably move that over there. I'm trying to save some wall pieces, and you'll see why in a second. So... Hmm... You know what, it might take a... Oh, I don't want to take a corner hut. I'm going to have to, unfortunately, move this over here. Which means I have to move something there. Can I move that a little bit? Ah, I can't. But I can do this. There we go. And that leaves me with being able to... Hmm. If I move this over here, is there a gap? No. Which means I can probably take this out. I can move that over... Uh, can I go one more? Yeah, I can go one more. There we go. And that fills up that spot. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is you're going to see me drop... What you want to do, I'm not going to do this for all of them, but you can drop actual pieces like this, wall pieces here. And you'll see that now it forces them to drop troops that much farther away. And ideally you want to drop two spaces, two tiles in between, to maximize your spot. So for example, now you can see that they have to attack pretty much at the border if they're going to say, for example, attack on this side. Just like that. So what you can do is you can do that and fill up all the spots up here, really, to maximize all your space, for example. And what it's going to do is it's going to force them to drop... You know what? I'm just going to, for simplicity's sake, we're just going to speed this up and go like that. But what you can see is that it's really just forcing them to attack further away, which means they have less control over the dragons and they don't know where they're going to go. Because if they can attack nice and close, like say where these collectors, or this storage is in this spell factory, then they can get to those air defenses very easily. But if they try and attack all the way from out here, they are going to have some hard trouble. The cost with this, like I said, since anyone who knows what they're doing can three-star the base, is they're going to be able to use ground troops pretty easily. Because if they break up that walls, you really don't have anything protection-wise. Which means if you wanted to, you could try and force them to attack a certain direction. For example, if you put a wall piece here and load it up, say here... Oh, uh, trick guys, uh, if you double up on wall pieces, one wall breaker can... Uh, the same amount of wall breakers that can break up one set of walls can break up a second, so never double up. If anything, leave a one tile gap as well. Because wall breakers have a three tile blast radius, which means they can blast themselves, the spot, this wall, and the next spot. But they cannot blast uh, the spot after the gap. So if we did that, and then for example we did something like this, then we can set some spring traps here, for example. Because we know that they'll probably try and maybe take out that uh, air defense, or... We can maybe drop out, since we know that they're going to go for something like this. Then we can maybe drop a spring trap there, and a spring trap on the other side. And then we can force them with the rest of the wall pieces over here, for example. But that's basically the concept. You want to figure out... The first thing is always, for no matter what base design for any 3-star, is going to be protect your clan castle by making the defenses go around the outside of it. As you can see, I have one defense around the outside uh, circumference of the whole clan castle. The next thing is then determining what is the biggest and uh, biggest threat defenses-wise to the three-star attacks that will be used against you. In this case, it's Town Hall 7, so it's really, for the most part, just dragons, which means you want to make an anti-drag, so your biggest threats are your air sweeper and your air defenses, so that's why I set them up this way. And then from there, we want to make it even harder, so that's why I built the base so far out. You saw me then placing wall pieces out like this, because then it forces them to drop their dragons way further out, which means they have less control. And then you also want to counter, okay, well, what is the other attack that might happen, which could potentially be ground. So then you're going to see me do traps, which will be all around there at likely positions where they might be able to attack. 
So we'll drop another Tesla there. For air, for your uh, air bombs, those aren't necessarily an issue as to where, but since I know that they'll probably attack from this area, I'll probably put them somewhere around here just to do some maximal damage. And you know what, we'll put something around this area as well just to really take them out. And you know what, let's represent with the nice flag as well and put that over here. And that's basically it. That's how you build your Town Hall 7 uh, war base. That is what you want to kind of keep in mind if you're building your own. You can build it more compact if you really want to. If you're for some reason getting attacked by a lot of ground troops, then by all means do that. Uh, as far as aerial troop, this is kind of the com uh, the concept. And another comment I just wanted to make for anti three star bases, you'll see it more at Town Hall 8 and Town Hall 9. But what the whole idea is, you don't care about protecting the air or the Town Hall. So, for example, on my Town Hall 10 war base, my base, I literally have the Town Hall way over here, uh, just on the edge of the complete uh, map. So it makes it nice and easy to take out, because be but it's because I know siege machines get used. And by doing that, they really can't use the siege machine. And I set it up in the base, so it kind of makes it unusable or not ideal to use the siege machine. Actually, the uh, siege machine when actually attacking me. But anyways, that's just uh, another concept for later on when you get to Town Hall 8 and up. And uh, yeah, so that's it. So then you can test those out. You can kind of see how they go. And I'll show you actually uh, my war base since I'm basically being done using it in about an hour and a bit. And that'll be the end of the video. So... Let's just take a look at mine and I'll kind of explain quickly why I set it up this way. And if you want, go ahead and use it because I'm not going to. So as you saw here, I'm trying to create this whole, you see all the white, the concept where the dragons have to attack from far. And like I said, it works pretty well against most attacks. Not all of them when people do know what they're doing, there's really nothing you can do. But I also wanted to create this gap in the middle here that you see all around that inner core to really push the dragons that if they attack they're going to attack the next closest thing which will be all of these things on the outside so you'll actually see dragons that will go all around the outside of the base before making it into the inside unless someone has really good funneling and by doing that then these air defenses here as you can see they're all in range so they're going to be able to shoot down those dragons and eventually when they get to the core all the dragons are going to basically be done the other thing you'll notice is that clan castle is hard to pull all the defenses around the whole base really protect the clan castle, which means you're going to see people try and take it out. So that's why I have a spring trap here, a spring trap here, because a lot of times I'll see people attack those specific defenses, and then you'll see the spring trap take their giants out, take their hogs out, and now they lose more troops, and now if they only put one or two just to pull the CC, now their whole attack is shot at that point. So that's really the whole concept. I put the Teslas in the middle as well, put some air or uh, giant bombs here just to protect in case there was a ground troop that broke in. And other than that, yeah, that is my current war base and it works pretty well, so go ahead and use that if you want to. But like I said, uh, not entirely perfect. Anyways, uh, that will be this video. I hope that helped. Uh, one of my, a little bit on my shorter end, uh, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, thanks again for watching, guys. I will see you later for the next one. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you uh, like the videos, you want to see more, uh, hit that like button as well. If you uh, go check out, I got Clash Clans and Clash Royale videos in case you're interested in that. PUBG and Fortnite ones will be coming out if they're not out already. And uh, this is going to be Leonidas signing off. Have a good night, guys, or daytime if you're watching it, wherever you are. And uh, peace out.